On the west coast of Africa, lying on latitudes 4 degrees north of the equator and latitudes 3 degrees and 14 degrees on the east of the Greenwich Meridian is the richly blessed country Nigeria. This country, popularly referred to as the Giant of Africa, bears that name not by accident. Facts and figures are on hand as proof. Nigeria, our dear country, has a population of over 200 million people, and by the year 2050, she is projected to be the third most populous country in the world with a population estimate of about 401 million people. Nigeria, Africa's biggest economy, is the sixth largest producer of crude oil globally, with about 37 billion barrels of proven reserves. We have, where other world powers lack, proven gas reserves of up to 206.5 trillion cubic feet and about 44 exploitable minerals in commercial quantities. There are 84 million hectares of arable land, out of which only about 40% is utilized. These market and resource advantages provide the basis for sustainable economic growth and development on the back of sound policies. What's more, Nigeria's economy rebounded from a recession in the fourth quarter of 2020 as growth in agriculture and telecommunications offset a sharp drop in oil production in spite of the second wave of the coronavirus pandemic and its crippling effect on global economic powers. The good news today is that the administration of President Mohamedou Buhari, GCFR, has taken some giant strides to translate these advantages into fortune for Nigerians and the benefits have continued to manifest in the form of improved growth indices for the Nigerian economy despite visible challenges. The Anchor Borrowers Program of the Central Bank of Nigeria, for instance, was launched on November 17, 2015. It has made more than 300 billion naira available to more than 3.1 million smallholder farmers of 21 different communities. They have, together, cultivated over 3.8 million hectares of farmland. The ripple effect on food security is unprecedented. In 2016, President Buhari launched the National Social Investment Program, currently the largest such program in Africa and one of the largest in the world. The National Social Register of Poor and Vulnerable Nigerians, NSR, has 32.6 million persons from more than 7 million poor and vulnerable households identified across 708 local government areas 8,723 wards and 86,610 communities across the 36 states of a country and the FCT. From this number, 1.6 million poor and vulnerable households are currently benefiting directly from the program through the cash transfers to ameliorate the effects of a pandemic and unrest created by enemies of Nigeria's progress on the economy. More than 150 billion naira has been disbursed so far from the Central Bank of Nigeria's 300 billion naira COVID-19 targeted credit facility to support millions of small businesses, households and young people with federal grants, loans and stipends. This move, which has been commended widely by many businesses that have survived the worst times against all odds has lifted many Nigerians out of poverty. Beyond these, infrastructure development has never been so prioritized in the history of Nigeria's democracy. The establishment in 2020 
of the Presidential Infrastructure Development Program with more than one billion US dollars in funding so far, has changed the infrastructure landscape of Nigeria and provided the basis for the success recorded by the President Buhari administration despite gloomy forecasts. Little wonder the international press called Nigeria's exit from recession unprecedented. The Nigerian Sovereign Investment Authority has seen total additional inflows of about 2 billion US dollars under the Buhari administration since the original 1 billion US dollars which the fund kicked off with in 2012. Consistency in the formulation of people-oriented policies in spite of the underground work of mischief makers and criminal-minded people to undermine these efforts and cause confusion in the country is at the root of the continued support by well-meaning Nigerians for the Buhari administration. In the light of the mood of the nation, the executive governor of Kogi State, His Excellency Haji Yahya Belo, has singled out the media as a very significant part of the solution to the current trend. His Excellency knows that with selfless patriotism laced with constructive journalism, our noble media professionals would only be reporting Nigeria for the benefit of Nigeria, and hoodlums and unknown gunmen will become dead vocabularies in Nigeria's dictionary. Little wonder, many scholars, opinion shapers and ace analysts at home and abroad have singled out Yahya Belo, the youngest governor in Nigeria today, as deserving of higher assignments. With your constructive pens, gentlemen of the press, you have contributed in no small way to Nigeria's modest feats since independence. We need you to change the narrative now more than ever. That's why we're here today at the first annual GYB Media Chat Seminar for political and crime correspondents and editors. Welcome.